Hello and welcome to the virtual IT learning. In this video, we will learn the basic Linux commands to gather system information about Linux CPU, memory, Linux processes, Linux server and user information. Let's get started. We will start with displaying the Linux server information. To return the Linux server information, we can use uptime command. We display the current time for how long the Linux server is up number of users and the CPU load average over the past 1, 5 and 15 minutes. To find out the user shell name, we can use the command ps p like this. Okay, in this case it is returning the bash as user current shell. If you want to return only the last line, we can just add tail dash 1 and it will return only the last line. If we want to return only the last column, which is bash in this case, uh, we can just use awk command. With column position. In this case, it is returning only the last column, which is bash in this case. When we use awk command, we just need to pass on the column position or the column number. To display all the system information, kernel version and the system architecture, we use uname-a command. We can also use cat proc version to display the similar information. The PROC file system is a virtual file system of the Linux system which contains information about system resources or runtime system information for, for example system memory, CPU information and hardware configuration etc. To find out the information about Linux CPU we can use the CAD PROC and CPU info. Now if you want to return only a specific piece of information like for example the model name we can add grep command so it will return only the model name. We can also use lscpu command which can be used to get the CPU architecture information. It will return pretty much the same information. Next is to display the memory information. To display the memory information, we can use free command. Free command without any parameters uses the default KB format. We can add other parameters like M for megabytes, G for gigabytes, and we can also add T parameter to get the total of physical plus swap memory, like this. We can also return the memory information from PROC file system using the cat PROC memory info. Now same way, if you want to return only a specific piece of information, we can add the grep command. For example, if you want to return only the memory total, we can add I to ignore the case it will return only the memory total same way if you want to get only the swap total we can just add swap total now we will see how to return the virtual memory statistics to return the virtual memory st statistics we can use vmstat which will display the virtual memory statistics it returns the processes waiting to run, CPU usage stats, paging, false, and memory stats. We can add one, which will display the stats with one second interval. To stop, just press Ctrl C, it will stop the command. Now we will see how to display the user information. To display the user information and see all user limits and current settings, we use ulimit a command. 
now we can see the current user has a limit of open files of 124 and same way the current user has maximum number of processes which can be of this number if you want to see only the file limits we can just add f which is unlimited in this case to display the list of users currently logged in you can use the w command you can also use the who or who command which shows the list of currently logged in users and if you want to see the number of users currently logged on we can just add pipe symbol wc and l it will show us how many users are currently logged in we can also use who am i command to return the current user name the next is to discuss the top command the top command provides a dynamic real-time view of the running system it displays system summary information as well as a list of currently running processes and the percentage of CPU and memory usage. In the output of the top command, the first few horizontal lines are showing summary about different system parameters like uptime and load averages. The uptime here is similar to the uptime command. The fields display uh, include the time your system is been up, the number of users logged in, load average of 5, 10, and 15 minutes respectively. The second line shows summary of tasks or processes in different states and total number of the processes like the processes running, sleeping, stopped. Next is the CPU state, showing the average of CPU time in different modes like user, system, NICE, idle, IO wait time, CPU time serving hardware interrupts, and CPU time serving software interrupts, etc. Next two lines show memory usage. The output is similar to free command. The first line shows the physical memory and the second line shows the virtual or swap memory. The physical memory is displayed as total available memory, used memory, free memory, and memory used for buffers. And same way swap shows all the same details. Let's discuss about fields or columns in this output. The processes are shown in columns. Different columns represent different properties like the PID column, which uniquely identifies a process. The user column shows the owner of the processes. The PR columns column shows the scheduling property of the process. Some values in this field are RT, which means that the process is running under the real time. Next column is NI, which displays the nice value of the process. Lower values are a negative nice value means higher priority and a positive value means lower priority. Next is VIRT column, which shows the amount of virtual memory used by the process. RES shows the resident memory size. Resident memory is the amount of non-swapped or physical memory a task is using. S column shows the process status. The values under this column may contain um, R, which represents the running process, and S, which represents the sleeping process. The CPU column shows the percentage of CPU time the task has used since last update. Memory column shows the percentage of available physical memory used by the process. Time plus column shows the total CPU time the task has used since it started. And finally, the command column shows the command which was used to start the process. Now we will discuss some useful interactive commands that we can use with the top command. You can use space or enter key to immediately refresh the display. The default refresh interval is 3 seconds. Now we are pressing space key which will immediately refresh the top command output. Same way we can press enter. It will immediately refresh the result set. We can also sort the result set. You can press capital M to sort by memory usage. It will show the processes using the highest memory. Same way 
To sort the result set by CPU usage, press capital P. Now it is sorting the result by CPU usage. To display a specific user process, you can use P option with the process ID which will display the specific user process details. For example, if you pick up a PID for top command to show the details only for a particular process ID, then we can, then we can use like this. First pick up the process ID, then use top command with P option and paste the process ID. Now it is showing only details only for that particular process ID. If you want to show the absolute path of the processes, you can press C which will display the absolute path of the running processes. You can also change the screen refresh interval in top by pressing the screen refresh interval. By default, screen refresh interval is 3 seconds. You can use D option in running top command and change it as desired. Or you can also use this option at command prompt when using the top command. Like when top command is running, you can just press D. It will ask you the interval. You can provide one. Now it will refresh with one second interval. Same way, you can provide two. So this is now two seconds interval. We can also add the interval option on command prompt. Now it is refreshing the result set with one second interval. To highlight the running processes in top, you can press Z while the top command is running, which will display the running processes in color. This can be helpful in identifying the running processes easily. By pressing Z again, it will bring the color back to default. You can also terminate the running process using K option while the top command is running, which will terminate a process without exiting from top command. Like in this case, we can identify the top command itself and we can try to stop this command. Press K. You will be prompted for the process ID and the signal to send to it. Press enter and it has terminated the top command itself because we provided the PID of the top command. To quit from the top command, simply press Q key and it will exit from the top command. Thank you for watching.